Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt. Today I show you how to make pineapple wine. So let's go. Uh, so today I wanted to make some pineapple wine. I've been wanting to do this uh, for a couple different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, I get a lot of questions from people about, well, hey, can I use this type of juice or that type of juice, what have you. Um, my most popular video, simplest way to make booze at home. We start off with grape juice, basically made a homemade wine. I've done hard apple ciders. Uh, I did an apple cider where we uh, mixed apple juice and uh, cranberry juice. In my Will It Ferment series, we've touched on apple juice and cranberry juice cocktail. Then I get questions about the more exotic juices, mango, guava, papaya, stuff like that. But one juice that doesn't get mentioned and I'm surprised at is pineapple juice. And I'm surprised for a couple different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, I'm surprised because it's pretty plentiful and it's fairly cheap. And people like pineapple juice. It, you know, once you get past apple juice, orange juice, grape juice, whatever, pineapple juice kind of that mix for next most popular juice. I'm surprised more people don't ask me about it. Also, too, if you do a little research, you find that uh, pineapple juice actually makes a pretty good wine. Uh, from what I gather, it's popular in Southeast Asia. And some of the reviews I've read and some of the wine, pineapple wines that are out there, they say it's almost kind of a blend between a Sauvignon Blanc and a Pinot Grigio. Uh, just what I gather, you can make some really nice wines with it. It's plentiful, so I'm surprised more people don't use it, but that's why we're doing this today. Also, too, the second reason why I want to do this video is in several of my winemaking videos, mead making videos, stuff like that, I use products like Acid Blend and Yeast Nutrient. Those are things you can find online, either through Amazon or a homebrew supply shop, or if you have a homebrew supply shop uh, in your town, then you can obviously get these things. But a lot of people don't have access to that, or uh, these videos are seen worldwide. A lot of places just don't have a homebrew shop. But if you still want to make a quality product, today I will show you some substitute for these two items and how you can still make a quality product even if you don't have access to them. So with that being said, let's make some pineapple wine. All right, let's get started. First and foremost, I've got my sanitized one gallon fermenter. We wanna make sure we got everything clean and sanitized before we start the product. Uh, that's just gonna make your life easier. Uh, if not, if you don't know a lot about sanitation, check out my video on homebrewing sanitation. I'll leave the link up here and you can learn more about the process. So I got everything sanitized. We're gonna go ahead and put our two half gallon containers of juice in here. All right. See, we got a little head uh, firming up that's actually good uh, that helps us get oxygen in that oxygen is needed for the yeast so um, and if you want to you can just give it a shake after we get done adding the juice in there um, again before adding the yeast if you want to shake things up or add you know help add oxygen that's only for the best just a shade left over because you don't want to fill all the way up uh, we might make a cocktail <laughs> out of this um, next we're going to add two cups of sugar to this now I can already hear some people yelling wait a minute it's fruit juice sir I got sugar why are you adding sugar diabetes ah, we're gonna die calm down the sugar I have to tell everybody in these videos the sugar's not for you it's for the yeast the yeast consumes sugar and thus they turn it into co2 and alcohol Let's give them what they need. Let's give them the supplies they need to give us what we need, which is that alcohol. So that's why we're adding the sugar. Uh, let me go ahead and add the two cups of sugar in. We'll come back to do a gravity reading and kind of project out uh, how much alcohol this is going to produce. All right, so we got our two cups of sugar in with our pineapple juice. Time to do our gravity reading. See, kind of project out where we're going to be alcohol-wise. We are coming in at 1.080, doing some quick mental math. Um, 
that should get us a range from the low nines. If we end up like around 1.10, that gives us the low nines. If we get all the way down to 1.00, now we're in the low to mid tens. So pretty, uh, pretty decent ABV. Normal wines would be in the low teens. So again, there would be room to add additional sugar. I'm not wanting to um, because stylistically this is supposed to kind of come out drier anyway. So that's fine. Um, with that being said, now that we got our gravity reading, let's come back, add our acid blend yeast nutrient, and talk about the substitutes for those two items. All right, gang, let's add our acid blend yeast nutrient. Uh, first, we want to add our acid blend. We're going to put in a quarter teaspoon of acid blend. Now, some of you may ask, what is acid blend? Why do I need it? And more importantly, what can I substitute for it? Well, acid blend is a blend of three styles of acid, citric, malic, and tartic. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And what it basically does is provide balance uh, to your wine. Uh, these acids naturally uh, occur in grape juice and through the grape skin or whatever, but other style of juices won't have the same uh, blend of acids. Uh, acids occur naturally. Don't, don't think of battery acid. Get, get that out of your head. But anyway, each fruit, each juice or whatever uh, we use has a different blend of these acids and doesn't quite mimic what we get in our traditional wine made from traditional grapes. So this is to provide that acid blend for it. Also to the acid in the wine kind of gives it a little pop, a little uh, liveliness to the wine where if you have a wine that's uh, low in those acids, it becomes very flat. And again, we want to kind of liven up the wine. Now, if you don't have access to acid blend, what can you use? You can use a lime, one whole lime or one whole lemon, uh, just juice those uh, two fruits in there. Um, again, heavy on the citric acid, obviously, but again, adds a little additional acid to it. Again, will liven up that wine and you don't have to go to the uh, homebrew shop for that. And next, let's add our yeast nutrient. We're going to add one teaspoon of yeast nutrient to our pineapple wine. Again, what does yeast nutrient do? Why do we need it? Um, and more importantly, how can we substitute for it? What yeast nutrient is, what it does, is um, a good example is the video where I just did a basic sugar wash just made alcohol with yeast and water or yeast or water and sugar now the problem we ran into that video was all right plenty of sugar for the yeast but there was nothing else kind of like us we can eat just raw sugar and live for a little while but after a while our body's like well hey where's the protein where's this where's our vitamin c and d and b and all these others uh we would quickly suffer same thing for yeast. They'll jump right in on the sugar, but they need other things. One of them is nitrogen. It's a real big thing. Um, actually, in researching this, one of the things I found is that you could conceptually use your lawn fertilizer, which is high in nitrogen and, and phosphorus, which gives something else that needs yeast can use, you could technically put it in there. Now, I don't think none of us want to go that far, but Yeast need a little bit more, and yeast nutrients helps provide that. Now, uh, and uh, especially with heavier uh, or higher sugar concentrated brews, higher ABV brews, the yeast need those help. So that's why we add the yeast nutrient. What can we substitute for yeast nutrient? Well, you have several options here. Um, probably the most popular one you'll see, especially in the mead world, is just some chopped raisins or a handful of raisins in there. Um, again, remember raisins are grapes, and grapes have all this stuff already. You have been making wine from grapes for a thousand years. They already have the nutrients uh, for the yeast, so why not just throw a handful of raisins in there? Uh, also, too, you can use uh, orange peels and lemon peels. They provide the additional nutrients. And oddly enough, and I've seen this in uh, some more mead and homemade wine recipes, but uh, making a strong black tea, putting like a shot of black tea in there, actually will uh, 
provide the nutrients uh, for the yeast. So again, if you don't have access to this stuff, that's fine. You can use these substitutes and still help you produce a good quality product. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick shake, and then I'm going to pitch our yeast. We're using a uh, Lavlin wine yeast, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll come back to wrap up and kind of talk about uh, where the uh, process goes from here. Well, all right, we've got our yeast pitched into our uh, pineapple wine. Let's real quick go over the recipe. One gallon of pineapple juice. We added two cups of just regular table sugar. Uh, we added a quarter teaspoon of our acid blend. You can substitute the juice of a whole lime or a whole lemon uh, for that to, again, just the acidity level in our wine. Uh, we added a teaspoon of yeast nutrient. You could substitute that with either a handful of raisins or maybe a shot of strong black tea or some orange and lemon peels. Any way you want to do that, again, give, gives our yeast the nutritional balance it needs to get the job done of making a good, proper wine. Our gravity reading came out at 1.080. We should be in the 9 to 10% range, depending on where we finish off. Now, where do we go from here? Uh, we're going to leave this in our primary fermenter for two weeks. After then, we're going to rack into a secondary fermenter and leave that in there for two months. After that, we're going to bottle. Around the six month period, uh, it will be ready to drink. We probably get four or five bottles out of this. So we may try a bottle each month and just see how it ages and matures. So you're gonna have something ready to drink in about six months. Uh, flavor wise, it'll peak somewhere between that six months to a year period. This is not necessarily something you would age for multiple years, like a big mead or a big Chardonnay, something like that. Uh, this is meant to be drank a little bit younger. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.